Hey there, welcome to another edition of Adam's Reviews. Today, I'll be reviewing the Nikon 14mm ED AF ultra wide angle lens. Now, if you're looking around for a nice wide angle to take dramatic photos that has an incredible field of view, then this is the lens for you. With quick and accurate AF, and a great range of f-stops, this lens is a particularly nice addition to any photographer's lens collection. First, let's go over the stats. It's got a spherical and ED glass elements, which helps cut down on the chromatic aberration, as well as ghosting, and it also improves corner-to-corner -corner sharpness. It has rear focus, which is very nice, so the lens doesn't extend in and out as it's focusing. I'm sure you guys have seen that before where it just kind of goes in and out like that. That's really annoying. It's got a built-in lens hood to minimize unwanted, unwanted stray light from hitting the lens. And it stops down to f22 and opens all the way up to f2.8. The lens weighs in at a hefty two pounds. This lens is also capable of capturing an incredible field of view and the contrast on it is fantastic. Now, it does distort towards the edges. That's just the nature of wide angle lens, especially on super wide angle lenses. But the nice thing is you can leverage the distortion to create some really interesting effects. And if you don't want those effects, you can always flatten the image out using something like uh, Adobe Lightroom. And it does a great job of minimizing the distortion when you use that. So one thing you will never get with this lens though, and that's bokeh. But what do you expect with such a wide angle lens? Um, if you want bokeh, you're gonna have to look for it in something that's a lot more narrow than this guy. So uh, for all you video videographers that, that are out there, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my lens over that I'm currently using on my camera right now to the 14 millimeters. So you can see what a huge difference it makes and how it looks when you're recording a video. And the camera I'm using right now is a Panasonic AF100. So there is a bit of a crop factor happening since the micro four thirds sensor and it is smaller than a full frame sensor. So let me go ahead and stop the video, swap this in and you'll be able to take a look at how this thing operates with video. Okay, so just before we get into the 14 millimeter, I wanted to kind of put things into perspective. So right now, this is a lens that I'm sure many Nikon users, and actually even Canon users, you're, you're very familiar with. It's the Nifty 50, you know, the uh, 50 millimeter Nikon 1.4. So this will kind of give you an idea about like what you can expect when you throw a 50 millimeter lens on the Panasonic AF100. And I'm sitting pretty much in the same spot that I'm sitting in for the review. So for the, uh, for the earlier uh, segment of this review. So that'll kind of give you an idea like how, how much closer the 50 millimeter brings the subject into the lens. So just for the sake of comparison, I, I went ahead and threw on the Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter uh, zoom lens that I have that is made specifically for uh, micro thir four thirds cameras. Whereas, you know, obviously, the uh, 14 millimeter Nikon and the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.5 are not made for um, micro four thirds. They're, they're meant for full frame sensors. So this will kind of give you an idea. And this, by the way, is, is wide open right now at, uh, uh, I don't mean the aperture is wide open. I mean that it's zoomed all the way out. So we're at 12 millimeters right now on the, the Panasonic. Okay, so here we are with the 14 millimeter. You can see it's a huge difference. Right now, uh, for instance, the, the lens is wide open. Uh, it's at f2.8. And even with it at 2.8, the depth of field is, is so extreme that when I was focusing, um, the, the, the depth of field was probably from somewhere around right here all the way, like way in, in the back here. I mean, it's just like, even with, the, like I said, with a wide open, the, the, the range of everything that's in focus with, with such a uh, a, a large angle lens is just, it's, it's huge. It's, it's, it's really incredible. All right, so hopefully that helps to shed some light on how this lens performs when it comes to video. 
Now on to things I'm not too fond of on the 14 millimeter. The lens cap is pretty bad. It's a flimsy vinyl leathery something or other drawstring bag that you pretty much just slip over the front. And that's really nothing to write home about. With the cost of this lens, I would have expected a little bit better protection. Something plastic, metal even, that would nice. Price. It is not a cheap lens. You pay a premium for the glass and technology inside this black, pla this, uh, black metal barrel. Um, and it also vignettes a bit at large apertures. Again, it's nothing that Adobe Lightroom can't cure, but it would be better if it was a lot less apparent. But again, you know, when you stop down, the vignetting does go away for the most part. And really, that's about it. There's not a lot to not like about this lens. So if you can, if you can afford and, and plop down about 1,400 US dollars and you need a really wide angle prime lens, this is the one to get. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed if you do get it. And as always, this review is available on youtube.com. If you wanna see it in a higher resolution, just search for Adam's reviews. If you find that these are useful, subscribe. And uh, if you really like the videos, click on the like button. It's like down here somewhere. So click on the like and click on subscribe, which I think is over here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.